I swear, these systems just keep getting cheaper and better. This is the AFP210 from a fairy, a fiery, a, 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 a fairy, I'm not sure. But this is a portable power station that I've been using for a couple of months now, and I've actually been pretty impressed with it. I've had zero issues with it out of the box, and this thing is crazy affordable for what you get out of it. It has this little storage compartment right up top, as well as it comes with this little carrying case of the accessories. The accessories are pretty simple. It's got a, an XT90 to MC4 adapter, and then a typical wall charger. I have lots of extra connectors of these, so I haven't needed these. I just have the ones in my garage that I use, and it does come with this special cover as well. So that way, if you have it outside, you wanna keep it out of the sun or in your truck bed, something like that, then you can put this over the top. It's gonna to keep the dust and water and stuff off of it. At least for storage, it's gonna keep it nice and clean. Maybe that's what I should have done. I've been like, voila, the A fairy is here. <laughs> The P210 is a pretty standard power station and you can find ones like this all over Amazon. This one I like in particular because of how big the screen is. It is very easy to read at a distance. But I get questions all the time from people asking about a system that is very good for very basic needs. That is just running like a refrigerator or just running laptops or drone batteries or charging your lights and phones and radios when there's a blackout. And I usually go over the ones that are capable of running a whole house because that's what interests me a lot and what most people are looking for. But there's always the need to have some portable power as well. This is truly not overly heavy, even though it has a 2400 watt pure sine wave inverter. It has 500 watts of solar input and a 2048 watt hour lithium iron phosphate battery. So to give you some context, a typical refrigerator will use about 150 watt hours per hour of operation. And let me explain that. A refrigerator will use upwards of 400 watts when it's running, but refrigerators don't run for 60 minutes of every hour. And there's a difference between how battery capacity is measured versus how much energy is happening at once. So energy at one given moment is called watts and energy stored or used over a period of time is called watt hours. So naturally watts and hours go together. So if I ran a 100 watt load for one hour, it would use 100 watt hours. So this having a 2048 watt hour battery could run a 100 watt load for 20.5 hours if the inverter is perfectly efficient. So there's many things to factor with these power stations or even DIY solar generators because you're never gonna get 100% efficiency out of the battery. The reason is, is the battery is a 48 volt DC charge. But these outlets here on the side that are underneath this little flap here, there you go. These use 120 volts AC power. So we're converting direct current to alternating current. And every time you do that, you get an efficiency loss. And then the same thing when you change from one voltage to another voltage, again, you have an efficiency loss. So even if you're going from 12 volts DC to 48 volts DC, there's gonna be a power loss there. Fun fact, power is a technical term for watts. All of that to say is it's pretty common for inverters to be around 85 to 90% efficient, meaning you're gonna get about 90% of the capacity out of the battery. So we'll just call that 1800 watt hours for easy math. Now back to the fridge, because it's not running for 60 minutes of an hour, it's not going to use 400 watt hours. A typical fridge will run maybe for a total of 20 minutes per hour because it'll run for five minutes, get the temperature cooled down again, and then sit for 10 or 15 minutes and then it turns back on again. And it's constantly cycling. There are a lot of things to factor, but the reason why I say it's 150 watt hours per hour on average is because if you run a 100 watt load for 30 minutes of one hour, that's 50%, then it's gonna use 50 watt hours in that hour but when it's running, it's gonna be using 100 watts. So I know this gets really confusing, but that's the difference of the inverter versus the battery. The inverter needs to be capable of running 400 watts in order to run the fridge, but it's only gonna be running that for roughly 20 minutes per hour. So I know that gets really confusing, but it's just simple math. If I'm gonna run a 500 watt load for one hour, it's 500 watt hours per hour that I'm running that. And if I'm only gonna be running that for 30 minutes in an hour, then it's gonna be half of that in watt hours. Now, as you see here, this has turned off because it hasn't been used while I've been talking here. 
but you can see the screen is very clearly visible from a distance and it's not overly bright. A lot of screens have a white backlight, which means when you're using it in your bedroom at night, say there's a power outage, there's no lights on in your room and just that screen is on, it's oftentimes really bright. So because this has a dark backdrop, it doesn't emit a lot of ambient light, which is really nice for light sleepers. Now, if you do want additional light, there is a light right here on the front. And I'll use that if I'm out camping with this or if I have this in my kitchen and there's a blackout or something like that. But generally speaking, I'm not using the light. It's not like I'm walking around with this as it's a flashlight or anything like that. Now the charging is very simple using this XT90 connector. Now I don't know why they went with XT90 because an XT60 would absolutely suffice since this only has a 500 watt charge. Now 500 watts is best case scenario. I've only been able to get around 400 watts out of it and that's due to the voltage parameter. It is 11.5 volts to 50 volts. Normally, these smaller units will go up to 60 volts on the charge controller. The charge controller is also called an MPPT, or Maximum Power Point Tracker, and that's just the device that converts solar panel energy to battery energy. So I'm not sure why they went with an XT90 connector, XT60 would have been fine, but they must have gotten a good deal on XT90s. XT90s are rated for more wattage or more amperage, really, and they don't need that with this setup. Fortunately, XT90 is still a common connector, so if you lose the connector, you can easily buy one on Amazon and replace it. Now, this is a very straightforward system. There's really no frills or anything crazy special about it, except for the pricing. The pricing varies, but the last time I saw, this was available for like $700. So for $700, you could easily have something that's gonna run your essentials, like a refrigerator and a freezer and Wi-Fi through the whole night. You don't have to go crazy with having a system that can run the entire house. You could just have one power station and then put extension cords right here into these outlets, run that to your freezer, to your Wi-Fi, and to your refrigerator. And that's what most people want to run during blackouts. The 500 watts or really 400 watts that you get in is barely enough to recharge this in a single day as long as it's a clear sunny day. And the best way I've accomplished getting 400 watts into this is by using two 200 watt solar panels that are 12 volts or 18 volts. Really what you're making sure is that the open circuit voltage or the VOC, that's on the sticker on the back of the panel, you don't want that to be above 25 volts. Now weirdly enough, 12 volt and 18 volt rated solar panels only go up to about 21 and a half volts for their VOC. So just putting two of those together has worked really well for getting this charged up. And I have gotten about 410 watts into this doing that setup in perfect ideal conditions. Now luckily on page 10 of the user manual, they specify the exact solar parameters and this can go up to 20 amps for its solar input. So you could actually very easily connect four 200 watt solar panels to this, putting two in group A and two in group B, using a two to one branch connector to join those, and then you'd have 800 watts total. And that's gonna be the best option because that's gonna be closest to that 20 amp mark. Now the main way that I've been using the P210 from a ferry is as a UPS. So basically I have stuff plugged into this all of the time, such as a refrigerator. In my case, I do it with my Wi-Fi router. Here at my house, I get power fluctuations pretty often and it will take out my Wi-Fi and I don't like that because I'll be watching a YouTube video or doing something on the internet and then the Wi-Fi goes out and then I'm sitting there just waiting for it to come back. That gets really annoying, especially when I'm doing emails and if you have questions on any of this equipment, you can just shoot me an email to info at poweredportablesolar.com and you can also find the kits that I use the most at poweredportablesolar.com. But for these units, they're just cheaper to buy directly through their link. So I'll provide that link as well as any potential discount that I have. So that way, if you're interested in this, you can get it at that discounted price. But like I said, I've been using this as a UPS. So I, I keep my stuff plugged into the side and then I keep this plugged into a wall outlet. The wall outlet keeps this charged up at 100%. And then as soon as I have that power fluctuation or if the power goes out for an extended period of time, everything that's plugged into this continues to run without any interruption. So this is really good for computers, Wi-Fi, printers, fridges, freezers, anything you want to keep running without interruption, you can just plug straight into this and then have this plugged into the wall. And as soon as the power goes out, this will keep running it for as long as the battery lasts. 
So if you're looking at like a one or two hour power outage and you're gone at work all day, this is a great option to just keep your essentials plugged into it. And then it'll self manage as the grid power comes back on. It'll recharge the system while still running that equipment. So that's what I mostly use these for or just portable power. Like when I'm up at my cabin on my property, if I don't have power where I'm going, I'll bring this with me. So that way I have power everywhere that I go in my side by side. Because this has a 2400 watt inverter, it's pretty powerful for the size. So I'm able to run things like water pumps. I have a 500 gallon water tank that I use for having water at my off-grid cabin. So as an example, when I need to clean the tank, I can connect a water pump to this and a water pump will pull anywhere from 1300 to 1800 watts, depending on the size of the pump. So I can get down into the tank and I can suck out all of the silt and sediment that builds up in the tank and power that all off of this. And this gives me about an hour to an hour and a half of runtime of running a high power pump. The other way that I've used this is I have a stream that runs at my cabin. So for getting the grass watered, I'll just hook up a pump to a hose, put the hose in the stream, hook the pump up to this, and then I'll run sprinklers in the yard for about an hour to an hour and a half. And that gets me over a thousand gallons pumped onto my lawn very quickly, making sure that the vegetation and grass stays nice and green. So there are lots of uses for the P210 from a fairy, a fiery, however you say it. But the simplest way is to use it as a UPS or portable power. And that's how I've been using it for the last couple of months. If you want to find this on discount, click the links down below. It's a really cheap and easy way to be prepared. And the alternative is building your own system using a battery like this. This is a 2,500 watt hour battery compared to their 2,000 watt hour battery. You can see size wise, this is about as big as this, but this doesn't have an inverter or charge controller with it. Meaning I can't get power off of this to run my fridge and I can't recharge this off of solar until I add an inverter and charge controller. Now a battery like this is usually around $400. And this is gonna be the most expensive part of the system. So you could probably DIY your own system with a little bit bigger battery, probably a smaller inverter, and maybe a little bit more solar input. So on average, similar to the P210, but then you have to do it all yourself. You have to wonder if what you're doing is correct. You ideally need to put in the proper fuses and breakers into this. So that way, if you overload it or have an issue, it'll safely shut down. All of that's already built into the P210, which is another reason why I like solar generators and power stations so much, is these are backed by warranties and companies that if you have an issue, they just replace it for you. If you do a system all on your own, you have to do all of the diagnosing and work yourself if there's a problem, and then you have to get a warranty claim on just that one part. There's pros and cons to both options, but the P210 is just a simple, cheap option that I have not had any issues with, and so that's one reason why I recommend it. If you guys have also used this unit, please comment down below so that way other people can get some feedback on it. And if you would like to see how to build your own DIY system, I'll leave a link right up here. Or if you're looking for a system that's even cheaper than a DIY system, then I'll have that video up over here. The biggest thing is to be prepared. Know what your needs are in an emergency and prepare for those needs. Thanks guys. See you on the next video.